this is Adam with Tech Dive. Today we're going to be talking about Movie Studio 16 Platinum and how to do motion tracking. So one thing I would like to point out is that it's amazing that they let the motion traction, uh, motion tracking option, the Bezier masking motion tracking, be in Movie Studio 16. So the price point of this editor should tell everyone that you shouldn't expect cool things like that. But it's so cheap and it still has so many cool things like compositing and it has... Uh, cookie cutter and it has um, amazing all sorts of amazing effects and one of those is Bezier masking and and that's that is just oh there's it's so cheap to have so many of these options so the pro version does it, I'm like that's great yeah the pro version should do that it's awesome that the pro version does that but when this version does it I'm like wow they I can't believe that uh, the consumer version has these features as well. So um, this is the consumer version of Vegas Pro, but it's still it's Vegas Movie Studio 16, and uh, we're going to talk about how to do motion tracking. So first, you need to go to get your media, and one thing that would be very easy to do to help you out is is pick what you're motion tracking. So motion tracking needs to be something high contrast. A face typically works very well because a face usually very cut out from the background on its own. And um, let's watch the clip that I'm going to motion track. You can see here, I'm going to leave the frame. So we're going to motion track my face, but actually leave the frame for a second. And then I come back. And then I leave the frame again. So what I want to do is copy this video to make it easier to motion track. This is what I'm doing. I'm going to give you just show you the basics of motion tracking and how it works. And uh, I, I what I want you to understand is is there you don't necessarily have to copy the video. But what I'm going to do, it helps to copy the video so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to copy this video and I'm going to put it in the not picture in picture track. If you put it in picture in picture, it's going to look funny. I'll do it so you can see if you messed up. Uh, you're gonna paste. Now you have two tracks. Make sure they snap together to line up perfectly. Now they're frame to frame, the same thing. But you can see that this one's in the picture in picture track. So you want it not in the picture in picture track. And you can arrange those however you want. You can delete the picture in picture track. But if you put it in the picture in picture track, that's gonna have an effect on it that doesn't you that you don't want. So now they're identical. And what I want you to do, uh, what I'm going to do, you don't have to do this, is I'm going to put some sort of intense effect on the bottom video. That way, if you see the bottom video, it's all swirled up. So you can tell the difference between the top and the bottom video so you can understand what I'm showing you. So that this is not important. You don't have to do that. That's just for clarity's sake because I'm explaining what's going on here. So to do Bezier masking, just go to the front of your clip. And I want you to kind of scroll through and find the points where your masking may not work. So your motion tracking that you're going to do may not work. So if I'm motion tracking my face, it makes sense about here. It's not going to work anymore because my face is leaving. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the rest of that because uh, I want you to see what it looks like when, when, when the face leaves and uh, we don't have time to to do a whole bunch of stuff here. So now we finally, we go to the video effects and you grab Bezier Masking, it's alphabetical order, throw that on there. Now you can see it cuts out the middle, and it cuts out the rest of it and leaves the middle in there. Uh, that's the mask, right? That covers something up, that's what a mask is. And so you can actually, We'll, worry. we'll talk about this mask effects in a second. You can blend it so you can see both at the same time. If what you're doing needs to do that, I would recommend it. You can also animate that blending, and you can watch my animation tutorial to learn more about animating and keyframing. I would highly recommend, if you've not animated and keyframed before, to practice with that first, because that's going to help you understand what's going on here with masking as well. Because uh, masking is really just a computer-generated keyframing effect. So, um... First off, you can change the type of your mask. You can go to oval, you can go to a rectangle, diamond, or curve. Now, what a curve is, is you can actually draw out a mask here. What's crazy about that is I'm in movie studios, and I just 
gave myself a custom cutout mask in movie studios. I am in movie studio 16 platinum and I gave myself a custom cutout mask. Now I don't know if this is in the platinum versions or the not platinum versions. If you want more details about how to do a custom cutout mask, uh, please watch my masking tutorial in Vegas Pro, but the generalness is you're going to need to go to edit mode and you can either add points or delete points or split points. So I'm going to delete them all just to show you to show you this again. If you have add points, you can draw a picture. This is what the blend mode can be used for so you can see what you're doing. You can draw a picture. Just connect the dots here around what you're doing. When you finish the dots, when you when you do the when you finish the dots, you need to click on the first dot again to complete the circle. You will continue to be able to edit and move around these dots until you get out of edit mode. So once you do that, then you have a mask. You can make this mask bigger or smaller, whatever you want, but then you have a custom cutout mask. And these width, angle, height, opacity, and feather, the width, angle, height can be changed here. Opacity is simply changing how much you can see through it. So uh, also also affected by the blend. And the feather is how, how much it, it blurs the edges with the what it is cutting with. So uh, you can either feather both in and out, you can feather in, or you can feather outward, depending on what works best for the effect that you're doing. <coughs> so location is where it is on a grid. So you got your X coordinates and your Y coordinates, right? This is where it is on the grid. And when you go to tracking, this is where you can motion track. So in your options, this is going to look different than Vegas Pro, um, but you can go location, rotational location, and size rotational location. We're just going to do location, and I'm going to hit start here, and it's going to draw out keyframes. Now, one thing that's different than Pro is the amount of detail you're able to motion track with. So. There is no there is no advanced options here. So if you're wanting some highly precision detailed motion tracking, you will need the pro version of, of Vegas. However, the fact that you can motion track at all in the software is still amazing. So you can see every few keyframes it will motion track my face. So let's watch let's watch my face here. There we go. It follows my face off the screen so that's very cool now like I said it's only doing it every few frames so if you need to fix anything you can actually select one of these keyframes and adjust it a little bit so like if if you hit this lock cursor button down here in the corner where I click on this window will show me in the, this preview window down here what's on the timeline corresponding so if I want this keyframe right here, and I decided that I actually want that one backed up a little bit, I can back it up a little bit like that. So I can kind of fix the tracking a little bit myself. And then now when we watch it again, it'll have my corrections in there as well. So again to get a higher detailed higher precision mask you will need Vegas Pro but the fact that you can do some light motion tracking and stuff and and just a consumer level software is astounding and amazing so there's one more thing I want to do so let's say let's get rid of this bottom track here I want you to see that that here we just have a, a mask let's open this back up and because I have the blending options really you just have a mask of my face right uh, and and I just changed that that keyframe there. So uh, anytime you move something, you're gonna change a keyframe. You can always regenerate something. Start at a point where you don't like it and try and have it generate again. So you can go to the keyframe and hit start again. But one thing I want to show you is is you have this ability to mask only the effect. So uh, what if I wanted to make my face uh, a newsprint? 
So I can drop the newsprint effect on this uh, chain here, or you can go to add effect and drop the newsprint effect there. And uh, I can put it before Bezier masking. So it needs to be before Bezier masking. And it needs to be, you need to have mask effect only checked. So with this newsprint option, I can increase the dot size. Look at that. If I don't have that checked, if I don't have in Bezier masking, if I don't have that checked, it will, it will just put the effect on the mask so it will cut out the video and put the effect on it. But if I have that checked, it'll just cut out the effect itself. So you can put newsprint before Bezier masking the effect plane to do that. You can customize the effect how you want it. And here we go. Now we have an effect that tracks my face. There we go. And again, that, that, that waffling there at the end, that's because I actually did some custom tracking. You saw earlier it was actually a little better before I started screwing with it. But I just wanted you to know that you can manipulate those keyframes. So if you're interested in the pro version of the tutorial, I'll link that here. If you, uh, But if you've got Movie Studios, that's how to motion track in Movie Studio 16 Platinum. One thing I would like to mention, though, before I go, uh, motion tracking needs high points of contrast. The face works pretty well. Um, but you can see here, this is in my pro version, but I want you to see, I, I motion tracked a shadow in pro. I want you to, to watch it real quick. You see that shadow? Not I didn't motion track this. This is hand tracked right there. But the shadow on my hand, watch it again. As it goes up and down, is motion tracked. So that motion tracking, see how the shadow goes up and down with me? was made possible by a dot I drew on my hand. So when I recorded myself with no dot on my hand, it, the motion tracking didn't work. And that's because motion tracking uses a high point of contrast. And if you don't have that high point of contrast, you're not gonna be able to motion track. So if you're trying to plan, when you're planning your shot and everything, think about that. Because a face kind of naturally has that high contrast area. It's easy to cut out a face. Uh, but if when it was just the palm of my hand, it was hard to do. I would have had to track my entire hand, and I would have had a little less flexibility. So giving yourself high points of contrast for motion tracking dots will actually help increase the effectiveness of the effect. Uh, and and, and that will especially help because Movie Studios doesn't have as much control over the detail and precision of the effect. So that would put a little bit more control back in your hands without purchasing the pro version of the software. So that is motion tracking with Vegas, uh, sorry, <laughs> I was reading up there. That's motion tracking with Movie Studios. Uh, that, that, that dot principle, like I said, it will work with Movie Studios as well. But that's motion tracking with Movie Studios, 16 Platinum. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like if it helped you out. Subscribe if you're looking for more videos like this one. I got lots of Vegas Creative Software and production related tutorials coming out uh, every week, uh, multiple videos a week. And if you would like to try out Skillshare, you can do so through our Skillshare link. That will help us out a lot. I'm putting tutorials on Skillshare as well. They're more holistic and project-based kind of tutorials. I'll be doing both Movie Studio, oh, sorry, both uh, Vegas tutorials, tutorials on YouTube and on Skillshare. So if you want to try that out, that would help us out a lot. If you want to buy the software, if you do it through our affiliates link, that would also help us out a lot. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Adam with Tech Dive. I'll see you guys next time.